Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as cellular compartmentation and protein sorting. As we know that in a eukaryotic cell, we have a lot of different organelles in it, and each organelle performs a specific type of function, just like a factory. In a factory, we have a lot of different departments there that are working on a specific type of task. For example, the nucleus of the cell is acting like a boss that is giving commands or tasks to other organelles to perform their function. Mitochondria is acting as a powerhouse of that factory that is providing energy to each department in order to perform their function. Golgi bodies, on the other hand, is acting like a packaging department of that factory that is producing finished products in order to leave the cell. Now, most of the organelles inside the eukaryotic cell perform their function with enzymes and proteins. And most of the proteins are translated inside the cytoplasm. There are a few proteins that are translated inside the mitochondria and chroloplast, but majority of the protein is translated inside the cytoplasm. Now, these proteins from the cytosol need to enter different organelles in order to perform their function. As you can see in this picture, the proteins are made in cytosol, and from here they are going inside the nucleus, inside the chroloplast, inside the mitochondria, peroxisomes or endoplasmic reticulum. If this protein is small in size, approximately 60 kilodalton, then they can enter inside the organelle by passive diffusion. But if these proteins are in bigger size, then they will take energy dependent transport system. Now, for each protein, in order to enter a specific organelle, have a specific type of signal and that signal is called a signal peptide. So around 15 to 30 amino acids of that polypeptide chain is basically determined that whether this protein needs to enter the mitochondria, lysosome, or Golgi bodies. So this specific sequence recognizes that which proteins belong to which compartment. Now signal sequence can be of two different types. One type is that they are present on one part of the polypeptide chain and will be recognized by the receptors. The other type is that the signal sequence is present in small patches and these polypeptide chain will take form into tertiary and quaternary stage, bringing all these signal patches together and make a signal patch. And now this signal patch will be recognized by the receptor. Now by this way, we can sort out three different types of transport system. One transport system is through the nuclear pore and that is called as gated transport. The other transport is across the membrane and that is called as transmembrane transport. And the third one is the transport by vesicles and that is called as vesicular transport. Gated transport usually occurs in the nucleus because the transport of protein will occur through a gate called as nuclear pore complex. Transmembrane transport will occur in mitochondria, in endoplasmic reticulum, in plastids, and peroxisomes. Now in this type of transport, we have translocation channels located on the outer membrane of each organelle or transmembrane proteins that is helping to enter certain different type of protein inside that organelle. And that type of transport is called as transmembrane transport. The third type of transport is the vesicular transport that will occur from endoplasmic reticulum to Golgi bodies endosomes, lysosomes, or cell surface. Now in this particular type of transport, the proteins and lipids gather close to the membrane and then bud off from that membrane. Now this bud will go towards the acceptor compartment and will do the fusion with it and will release the protein inside that acceptor compartment. In this video, we are going to discuss the gated transport in detail. Gated transport occurs inside the nucleus, so let's examine the nuclear membrane more closely. In this picture, you can see all different type of organelles present inside the nucleus. If we look at the structure of nucleus, we will find out that it has two bilipid membranes, 
one is called as outer membrane and one is called as inner membrane. The space that is present in between the outer membrane and inner membrane is perinuclear space. The nuclear pore complex is present in the junction of the outer membrane and the inner membrane. The inner membrane is supported with nuclear lamina. Nuclear lamina is basically a kind of protein that is giving stability to the nucleus. On the outer side of the membrane, we have endoplasmic reticulum. They can be smooth endoplasmic reticulum or rough endoplasmic reticulum. Inside the cell, you have nucleolus and you can see the chromatin material spread across the nucleus. Now, the main organelle that is transporting the proteins from cytosol inside the nuclear is the nuclear pore complex. So, let's discuss the structure of nuclear pore complex in detail. Now, this is a beautiful picture of nuclear pore complex. Here you can see this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane and this nuclear pore complex is present at the junction of the two membranes. All the proteins that are making this nuclear pore complex is called as nuclear porins and they have Fg repeats present in the center. Fg is basically the amino acid phenylalanine and glycine present repetitively inside that part and making a mesh type of structure. So if a small molecule wants to enter the nuclear pore, it can enter the nuclear pore by passing through this mesh easily, but will not allow a larger protein to enter inside that nuclear pore unless and until this protein have a signal or a permit to enter inside that gate while other proteins will not enter inside it. The permit that allows this protein to enter inside the nuclear pore is called as nuclear localization signal. If a protein wants to get out of the nucleus, then they will have a signal called as nuclear export signal or NES signal. Now let's discuss the nuclear localization signal in more detail. Nuclear localization signal sequence basically have basic amino acids or positively charged amino acids in it. As you can see in this picture, we have five different proteins that basically enters inside the nucleus. And all of these protein signal sequence have lysine and arginine in it. And these lysine and arginine is providing the positive charge to that signal sequence. Now let's see how a protein enters inside the nucleus. In this picture, you can see this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane. And these are the nuclear pores present at the junction of the outer membrane and inner membrane. The nuclear basket is present inside the nucleus and the cytoplasmic filaments are present in the cytosol. So this is the cytoplasmic area and this is the nucleus. Now, this is the protein that needs to enter inside the nucleus. And this green portion is basically the NLS sequence that is recognized by a receptor in order to pass this protein from the nuclear pore. This protein will also called as cargo protein or cargo molecule. Now, the receptor that will take this protein from cytosol into the nucleus is called as important. Important have two domains called as important alpha and important beta. Important alpha has the ability to recognize this NLS sequence and important beta has the ability to recognize the nuclear pore complex. So this protein will attach itself to the important alpha domain and important beta domain will take this protein with the receptor inside the nucleus. Now inside the nucleus, we need to detach this protein from Important. In order to detach this cargo protein from Important, we need a RAN GTP molecule. RAN GTP is guanosine triphosphate, so it will have three phosphate groups. Now this RAN GTP molecule attach itself to the Important. Once it attaches itself to the important protein, it will trigger a structural conformational change inside the important protein and will allow the important protein to leave the cargo protein from it. Now, important protein needs to get back into the cytoplasm in order to bring the next protein inside the nuclear membrane. 
For that, it will go outside the nucleus with the RAN GTP. Now, important protein needs to get detached from RAN GTP molecule. In order to do that, we have another protein called as RAN GAP or RAN GAP. Now, this protein will hydrolyze RAN GTP molecule into RAN GDP molecule by removing one phosphate atom. By this way, the important molecules can no longer attach itself to the RAN GDP molecule and will allow itself to be available for the next protein to enter inside the nucleus. Now, this RAN GTP needs to get back inside the nucleus to perform its function. For that, we have another protein called as NTF2. Now, this important alpha and beta will attach itself to the next protein and RAN GDP will attach itself to NTF2 and they both will enter inside the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, the job of NTF2 is done, so it is going back out into the cytoplasm. Now here, again, this cargo protein needs to get detached from important protein. But right now, we have RAN GDP instead of RAN GTP. In order to convert RAN GDP to GTP back, we need another protein. And that protein is attached itself with the chromatin material, and that protein is called as RCC1. The full form of RCC1 is a regulator of chromosome condensation 1. This protein can also be called as RAN-GEF or RAN-GIF. Now, this RAN-GIF will attach itself with the RAN-GDP and will attach one phosphate molecule with the RAN-GTP. Now, this RAN-GTP becomes RAN-GTP again and it can perform its function. So, it will again attach itself to the important proteins and will detach it from the cargo protein. Nuclear export. Now, one might be wondering what type of protein gets out of the nucleus because the synthesis of protein will occur inside the cytoplasm. The answer to this question is that sometimes we need enzyme inside the nucleus to perform their function. Once their function is done and their job is done, they need to get out of that nucleus. So those proteins can get out of the nucleus by the system called as nuclear export. Nuclear export is a lot similar to nuclear import. So it will be explained by the single picture. As you can see here, now this is the protein that needs to get out of the nucleus. So this is the nucleus, this is the nuclear membrane, and this is the nuclear pore. This protein, in order to get out of the nucleus, need a signal, and that signal is called as nuclear export signal. This protein will attach itself to the receptor, and this time the receptor is called as exportin. This receptor will attach itself to RAN GTP again in order to get out of the nucleus. Once all these three things are bind together, they will go out of the nucleus inside the cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, RAN GTP is going to get hydrolyzed by the protein name as RAN GAP. Now, with the hydrolysis of RAN GTP into RAN GDP, the cargo protein, the exporting, will get detached from each other. Now here, RAN GDP go back inside the nucleus where it will convert it back into RAN GTP by the protein called as RCC1. And this process will continue again. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe this channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.